The first drug that was used is a drug called methadone. It was developed in the mid-1960s. That was used primarily to substitute for the heroin that individuals might be using. And because it's an opiate, it produces an effect called cross-tolerance. And basically, an individual would be treated with a dose that is escalated high enough so that if the individual went out and shot up some heroin, they would not be able to feel it because the tolerance produced by the methadone would be high enough to block its effects. The next drug to come about was L-alpha acetyl methadol. This was a longer acting version of methadone in the sense that it had two active metabolites that stayed around even longer. So you could imagine an individual could take LAM every other day or in fact every third day, which actually also helps to interrupt that addictive cycle, you will, of having to take a drug repeatedly during the day in order to get high. So both of those drugs, methadone and LAM, would eliminate that high because they're sluggish in, in their ability to uh, produce, their, uh, produce their effects. Then we had a major breakthrough, um, the development of a drug called buprenorphine. It doesn't produce the same intensity of the effects that you might get with morphine or methadone or heroin. And so you don't get as much of an overdose-like effect. In fact, the respiratory depression effects of buprenorphine are much lower than they are with some of the other classic opiates. Now buprenorphine also has another property, it's a kappa antagonist, which is another kind of receptor that we find in the human brain. And that particular combination makes it rather unique because it provides a long-acting suppression of drug-seeking behavior. But here's where, the, here's where it really kicks in. It has a long half-life. What that means is that when you stop taking buprenorphine, up to 96 hour half-life means that an individual will not go through withdrawal right away. Now buprenorphine alone can be abused and that's one of the concerns that people had about methadone or even using morphine or some of the other opiates. So the manufacturers got very creative and they added naloxone to the buprenorphine mix. Now naloxone, you should know, is an opiate antagonist. That is, it blocks those receptors. This combination is called Suboxone. It's a tablet that you put underneath your tongue and it slowly absorbs both the buprenorphine and the naloxone. Now you might think, gee, that doesn't make sense. Well, it turns out that naloxone is not very effective when you take it sublingually. You have to inject it and therein lies the creativity. If you want to take Suboxone, and try to inject it, the naloxone that's in there will actually block the effects of buprenorphine, making it less likely to be abused. And that's where the hope lies, is that we do have multiple different ways to treat opiate addiction.